Hello! Welcome to part 5 of my series of videos on how to set up your basic Vista 20 alarm system. Part 1 covered the basic component requirements for all home alarms. Part 2 was how to hook up those components. Part 3 were sensors you could attach to the alarm. And in part 4 we began programming, starting out with how to enter and exit programming mode. Our goal for today? I'd like to tell you the technical theory behind programming zones. Hmm, that's interesting. What's a zone? A zone is simply something you want to protect. It can be as small as the safe in your library, or as large as your entire house. But putting every sensor in a house on one zone is a very unwise thing to do. If your alarm were to activate, you would know there's a problem but have no clue where the problem was. The solution? Divide your house up into geographically recognizable zones. This way, when the alarm says, security breach in the master bedroom, you know where it's happening at. But you have to remember the bad news. You're limited to eight hardwired zones. So unless you're adding an expander module, you may have to get creative assigning your zone numbers. Once you've created your eight zones, time to move on to the next step. You need to identify each place you'll need a sensor. Let's move on to the detail work. The problem area in this library is the window. To properly protect it, I'll need two types of sensors. A read switch, to tell me if anybody has actually opened the window, and a glass breakage detector. This will tell me if anybody's broken the window. Why do I care about a broken window? Why, because a broken window can allow a criminal to crawl in and out of it all day long. In the meantime, your read switch is perfectly happy and content because the window's not been opened. Now that you've selected your sensors, you just have to figure out how you're going to wire them. You have five choices for wiring configurations. We'll cover those very shortly. Okay, let's start talking program zone theory characteristics. Pull out your Vista 20P programming guide, and in the back of this guide you'll find a table that we need. It looks something like this. This is a zone programming worksheet. It will help you in two ways. The first is it tells you all the default values that the Vista 20P zones currently have. The second is, months or years later when you go back to look at your programming, this sheet is where you're going to log how you programmed it. Currently, we're only interested in the first eight zones. They're shown here, and they're all hardwired. On the left side of this worksheet, you'll find this table. The table shows you acceptable values that can be used while you're programming. Here I've shown you how the table relates to the columns. Notice for the first eight zones, you do not use input type. Input type is used in expansion modules and RF zones. Moving in for a closer look, the first thing you're going to program will be zone type. This is telling me zone 1 is pre-programmed to zone type 9. Okay, that doesn't really help me, but this document will. Installation and setup guide on page 3-2, you'll find many pages of zone types and a very detailed analysis of what each can and can't do. Now we have enough information to make sense out of zone type 9. This is a supervised fire loop. Supervised means it has to have an end-of-line resistor, and currently it's looking for heat or smoke detectors. Zone 2 default is zone type 1. This will be used for the door you use for entering and exiting the house. It has its own zone type because you want to be able to assign entry and exit delays to this zone. The default value for the remaining zones, 3 through 8, will be zone type 3. This correlates to your perimeter. Things like your window read switches and glass breakage detectors and such. Other useful zone types you want to know about as you begin programming? Type 0. This tells the alarm panel to ignore that zone. Now let's say you live in a small cardboard box. You only need four zones to protect your box, so you program zones 5 through 8 to be 0, and the alarm panel ignores them. Type 2 is another entry-exit zone. This comes in handy when you want two different entrances to have two different entry delays. For example, the front and back door can have a 45 second delay, while you can set the garage to four minutes. Plenty of time to open the door, drive your car in, and leisurely walk over and disarm the panel. But make sure you lock the door between the garage and the house. That way you haven't defeated the 45 second delay on your main doors. Type 7 is a 24 hour audible alarm. This means that zone is always armed. It's monitored even when your alarm is not armed. Use this for panic buttons or tamper switches. Do you have a safe? Set it to zone type 7 and your safe is protected 24-7. When you want to open the safe, simply use the security code and the bypass key, then no alarm sounds. If a criminal forces you to open your safe, your alarm activates. This is pretty cool in my book. Finally, I like to monitor some things like my backyard gates or the chicken coop door. 
but you don't want them to trigger an alarm. This is where Type 12 Monitor Zone comes in handy. At a glance at the control panel, I know the gate is closed and the dogs can't get out. If the gate status should change and you have chime mode activated, the panel will give you a pleasant little chime telling you to go check the gate. Moving on to the next column, we have Partitions. You can select one, two, or both. We covered partitions in Part 4. After partitions, we move over to report codes. Report codes are the information that your alarm will send back to the home office if you have a monitored system. Since we're going to do our own monitoring, we don't need report codes. Clear the codes out by entering zero. Well, the next column is going to require a little more discussion than we did on report codes. That will be hardware type. You need to tell the Vista panel how you've electrically wired your sensors. That way the panel can interpret what it's seeing at the other end. Let's take a journey back to our worksheet table. You have five possible entries you can make in this column, 0 through 4. Default for the first eight zones is end of line resistor. Here I put together a sheet showing the schematic representation of each zone hardware type. Type 0 uses a 2000 ohm end of line resistor to check the health of the circuit. Type 1 simply a normally closed switch. Type 2 a normally open switch. Type 3 is called zone doubling. What this allows you to do is to identify two separate sensors in a zone and which of those two sensors was activated. For example, zone 5 here has a front door and a back door. Zone doubling allows you to determine if it was the front or back door that opened. I'll cover zone doubling in another video. Finally, we have type 4. This is your double balanced zone. As far as I can tell, You'd only use this if you were setting up a system for Fort Knox. Every sensor has tamper protection built into it. You'll find zone type descriptions on page 2-6. On this page, I'd like to point out one very important note. It says here that if you don't use an end-of-line resistor, well, they can't guarantee your alarm panel is going to work correctly. So, if you've already hardwired your system normally closed and want to add an end-of-line resistor, it's easy. Simply add it in series as shown. To add an end-of-line resistor to a normally open circuit, add the resistor in parallel. By the way, I just clarified something that's somewhat confusing on the schematic on the alarm panel door. With all these switches shown, where do you actually put the resistor? The confusion arises because they're showing both normally open contacts and normally closed on the same circuit. I didn't even know you could do that. Here they show normally closed in series, and this shows normally open in parallel. Okay, moving on. The last thing we need to look at is response time. English version? How fast will this panel respond to an alarm condition? You have four choices. The quickest response time is entry number zero. This is 10 milliseconds, or in human terms, a tenth of a second. My concern with this setting is that it could cause the alarm panel to be too sensitive, which could cause false alarm conditions. The next setting, number one, also happens to be the default setting. 350 milliseconds. I have never had a problem keeping this setting in my programming. Setting number two is 700 milliseconds. That's almost three quarters of a second. This setting actually worries me. Someone who's really fast, you know, like maybe Jackie Chan, could quickly open up the door, get through it, and close it without setting the alarm off. But I do see other uses for it. How about hooking up two sensors on your bedroom window? On hot nights, three quarters of a second is more than enough time to open and close the window between the sensors, giving you more or less air. Your final option is 3. This option was designed for Zone 1. Some 4-wire smoke detectors can actually be reset before an alarm is sounded. This 1.2 second delay gives the alarm panel time to do the reset. Well, that's about it. The small little table we looked at has told us everything we need to know about programming zones. Come to think of it, everything except naming the zone. Until you name the zone, which we'll cover later, the alarm panel is just going to refer to the zone as Zone 1, Zone 2, etc., etc. Well, that about covers zone programming theory. In the next video, part 6, we'll do some hands-on programming for zones. I guess I should throw in a disclaimer. I am not a professional alarm installer. I'm just some guy that likes to teach himself new skills, then pass it on to others. Thanks for watching.